Basic Psychology The Divisions of the Nervous System The Brain Did you know that the brain is divided into four main components? No, I didn't. Can you tell me more about them? Certainly. The four main components of the brain are the cerebrum, cerebellum, diencephalon, and brain stem. Wow, that's a lot of different parts. What are the functions of each one? The largest component is the cerebrum, which is split into two halves, called cerebral hemispheres. These further subdivide into four lobes, frontal, occipital, parietal, and temporal. Interesting, what are the functions of these different lobes? The frontal lobe is involved in speech, thought, and learning, while the temporal lobe is responsible for hearing and memory. The parietal lobe processes sensory information, and the occipital lobe processes visual information. I see, that makes sense. What about the other components of the brain? The cerebellum is responsible for controlling motor skills, balance, coordination, and muscles. The diencephalon, which includes the thalamus and hypothalamus, acts as a relay station for nerve impulses and regulates body functions like temperature, hunger, and thirst. Fascinating, and what about the brain stem? The brain stem regulates automatic functions essential for life, such as breathing, heartbeat, and swallowing. It also allows for the passage of motor and sensory neurons between the brain and spinal cord. The spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system. I've been really curious about the nervous system lately. Can you tell me more about the spinal cord and how it works? Absolutely. The spinal cord is a crucial part of the central nervous system. It acts as a relay station, transmitting information between the brain and the rest of the body. The spinal cord is connected to different parts of the body through spinal nerves. These nerves carry messages to and from the brain, allowing it to monitor and regulate bodily processes like digestion, breathing, and movement. That's fascinating. So the spinal cord is kind of like the highway for all these important signals? Exactly. The spinal cord is essential for coordinating simple, involuntary movements. Nerve circuits in the thoracic region, for example, can enable movements without the brain's direct involvement. Wow, I didn't realize the spinal cord was so versatile. What about the peripheral nervous system? How does that fit in? The peripheral nervous system includes all the nerves outside the central nervous system, which is the brain and spinal cord. It's responsible for relaying nerve impulses back and forth between the body and the central nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is further divided into the somatic nervous system, which controls voluntary movements and the autonomic nervous system, which regulates involuntary bodily functions. That makes sense. It's like the spinal cord is the main highway, and the peripheral nervous system is the network of roads connecting it to the rest of the body. Exactly. You've got a great grasp of how these systems work together. It's amazing how our bodies can coordinate all these complex processes without us even thinking about it. The Somatic and Automatic Nervous Systems The somatic nervous system is responsible for transmitting and receiving information from our senses, like sight and hearing, as well as controlling the movement and reaction of our muscles. That's fascinating. How does it do that? It is 12 pairs of cranial nerves that emerge from the brain, and 31 pairs of spinal nerves that come from the spinal cord. These nerves contain sensory neurons to relay information to the central nervous system, and motor neurons to send information from the central nervous system to the body. Wow, I had no idea the somatic nervous system was so complex. What about the autonomic nervous system? The autonomic nervous system is responsible for regulating involuntary bodily functions, like heart rate, blood pressure, and digestion. It has two branches, the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. How do those two branches work together? The sympathetic system is involved in the fight-or-flight response, using the neurotransmitter noradrenaline to increase heart rate, blood pressure, and decrease digestive activity. 
The parasympathetic system, on the other hand, uses acetylcholine to lower heart rate, blood pressure, and increase digestive activity, helping the body return to a normal state.